after me. I'm an innocent clown. Stop in the name of the law. LEGO City Undercover is one of the best LEGO games I've ever played. It was so great on the Wii U that Warner Brothers decided to end its exclusivity and port it to other systems, including Nintendo's newest system, the Switch. So given that the Switch, aside from its handheld home console hybrid design, is more streamlined with power and no second screen, what was gained or lost with this port? It's LEGO City Undercover for the Nintendo Switch. The story and concept is the same. Chase McCain is back in LEGO City to stop a crime wave. So you play through this large open world using many disguises to infiltrate gangs, stop criminals, and steal cars. This is an emergency. Your shoe is bigger than this car. The audio also remains the same. Great voice acting, great comedy, fun music. If you want my full thoughts on the game, go watch my review of the Wii U original. What I want to focus on with this review is what this port on the Nintendo Switch does differently. The visuals don't look much different from the Wii U original. We still shouldn't expect much visually from LEGO games, but the visuals staying the same means this game still looks good. Unfortunately, there still doesn't seem to be any way of changing the time of day from day to dusk or night. Just a note on aesthetics. More important here is the performance. The frame rate does seem a bit more consistent in the open world than before. I noticed some dips in frame rate during two-player mode, but overall the game runs smooth. There's also something to be said for its smooth performance in handheld mode. Undercover The Chase Begins on the 3DS was supposed to basically be this game in portable mode, but that game felt like a LEGO City that was watered down to fit on the handheld. With LEGO City on the Switch, you get the full game for at home and on the go without having the weird draw distance fog or having to load the game every time you enter a new district, and that's a big plus. But you want to know about the load times, right? Well, TT Fusion heard our complaints about that and they made a few changes. The music and spinning badge have been replaced by a spinning Lego set and a character giving you tips in a funny way. As for the speed, the load times are shorter than before, but sometimes they still feel unnecessarily long, in docked mode and handheld mode. And that's a bit frustrating that they couldn't get the load times consistently under 30 seconds, which I feel is reasonable for this game. Yeah, changing what we're looking at is cool and all, but that doesn't exactly distract us from the load times, guys. When this game was on the Wii U, it did quite a lot with the gamepad. The gamepad was your map, communicator, scanner, camera, it added a great level of immersion to the whole experience. It was even built into the game with Chase having his own device that looked like a Wii U gamepad. Well, he still has a device of sorts, but with no second screen, everything is in one place like a standard console open world game. Everything works well enough, but it does feel like the level of immersion was lost as a result. Also, it feels more useful walking and driving around the city with a map of the whole city viewable on the gamepad. The mini-map just doesn't feel as useful now. This may sound like nitpicking, but honestly it was something that had charming appeal in the original. Same with the Nintendo references, which sadly have been removed from this port. Yes, even on the... Wait... What? Phew! Looks like an update on the Switch version restores the Nintendo references. Okay, so some charm from the Wii U version remains after all. But the positive change TT Fusion made for this port was a two-player co-op mode to make this more like their other LEGO titles. The co-op is pretty fun. Like other open-world LEGO games, both players can go anywhere they want in the open world. They don't have to stay within a certain distance of each other, which means the two of you can accomplish more side quests faster. I was curious to see if the gameplay structure would change at all, and after playing it, I saw that it hadn't changed. There aren't any puzzles that require two characters like in other LEGO games. Now, this has a positive and a negative. On the downside, this means the puzzles can be less engaging when two people are playing. This game was still structured as a single player game, but on the upside, there's enough to do in each level and in the open world that two players can still have fun conquering everything together. I think the parts that were most fun with two players were combat and driving around causing chaos in the city. As I said many times before, Undercover is a superb game. It's enjoyable for many reasons. So for anyone who didn't buy a Wii U but bought a Switch, definitely add this game to your library. But it's harder to recommend for Nintendo fans who already own the Wii U original. Even with the flaws, the game just felt right on Wii U with how it used the gamepad. I suppose the main reason for people who have the Wii U original to get this Switch version would be for being able to play the whole LEGO City game on the go. And if you really want to own a version of this game that offers two-player co-op. Simply put, if you don't have this game at all, buy it now. If you have it on Wii U already, I do recommend you get this for its portability, but try to get it on sale. 
And that's my review of the Nintendo Switch version of LEGO City Undercover. If you like this review, check out my review of the original Wii U version of LEGO City Undercover. Or check out my review of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for the Switch. See you all next time! Ow! <laughs>